good afternoon and a very warm welcome to thorough newspaper analysis so today is 20th of may and this entire video series is brought to you by law seeker now let's head to the agenda for today so first for the editorial segment we have taken up an indian express article which is titled as freedom and reasonable restrictions red lines around right to assembly see here essentially the government of andhra pradesh it issued an order which sought to regulate any sort of gathering on let's say the national highways the state highways or public roads and uh, as a result of this now the andhra pradesh high court it has passed a certain order we're going to have a look at what the high court has held we also have a look at an important uh, supreme court decision which pertains to right to assembly and uh, the second segment for today's discussion is the news update segment and thirdly we talk about important legal updates of the day so with this let's dive into the tna we start off the tna with this article which is cited as freedom and reasonable restrictions red lines around right to assembly so this is going to be our order of understanding of it first we talk about the issue where we discuss the high court's ruling very briefly the crux of it and then we have a look at what this order essentially is which was issued by the government of andhra pradesh thirdly we talk about what the court has held and fourthly we have a look at uh, the observation of the court made with respect to right to assembly and we also have a look at what the supreme court has uh, said when it comes to right to assembly in this particular judgment so let's start with the why of this article here see the andhra pradesh high court it has set aside a government order by the government of andhra pradesh which is sought to regulate public gatherings and assembly on uh, road sides or roads public highways national highways and margins and the court has done this while saying or stating that historically culturally and politically the tradition of public meetings of processions of assemblies on streets highways this has been recognized in our country and it in fact is a very important facet of uh, the political life that we see in our country and i'm sure you would recall that our freedom struggle it is such a great example of how satyagrahs were conducted and how assemblies were held for the purpose of demonstration and which secured us our freedom so the bench of uh, chief justice prashant kumar mishra along with another judge it is called that uh, it is recalled that the india's freedom struggle it had witnessed numerous satyagrahs on the road and in fact if we take an example of uh, contemporary andhra pradesh it has also seen a lot of processions and padyatras assemblies on the very public roads and highways now let's a look uh, let's have a look at what this government order essentially was so the state government it uh, contended before the honorable high court that uh, following recent fatal accidents and loss of lives due to a lot of stampedes it uh, the government it has decided to regulate meetings on public roads without however banning them all so the government essentially is arguing that it is just regulating these meetings why because they were leading to a lot of accidents so in order to save lives and order to facilitate that there is a smooth flow of traffic and of transportation on roads we just regulating these assemblies and we're not banning these assemblies altogether now the state government for this purpose has placed reliance on these three sections of the police act of 1861 section 30 see it pertains to regulation of public assemblies and processions and licensing of the same while section 31a it allows officials to disperse the assembly if the license conditions they are violated and the last section which is 31 it uh, it uh, provides that it is the duty of the police to keep order on the public roads and any other sort of public transportation the mode of uh, the infrastructure of public transportation now as far as the court ruling is concerned see the court said that uh, a plain language which is interpretation of section 30 if we interpret section 30 very plainly based on its language the court said that it showed that the authorities they have the power only to regulate and that an officer who believes that the assembly it may cause a breach of peace it can ask the organizers to apply for a license and to prescribe conditions for the meeting however the officer cannot insist on a license or a permission unless he thinks that there is a likelihood of breach of peace so what the court said is that as per the interpretation of this section there has to be first an apprehension of likelihood of breach of peace then only you can insist on license but the license it does not come first 
so as a result of this the court said that this government order it is not it does not stand the test of law and uh, therefore the court has uh, said that the state could frame proper guidelines in future keeping in view the law on this particular subject also with respect to the the, the argument with of uh, a uh, fatal accidents being caused the court said that the fact that an accident or an incident it had occurred at a particular place it cannot be used as an objective or cause for the purpose of curtailing the very right to assemble and to take out uh, processions on all roads the court said now let's understand as to what right to assembly observation the court made see the cure suggested in the government order it will impose an unreasonable restriction on the constitutional freedom of a citizen or political party to assemble and to hold meetings this is what the court said the right to assemble to protect uh, to protest peacefully and to express one's opinion very freely this is too precious if freedom to be taken away by unproven assertions by an officer of the state the court again said now let's understand as to what the supreme court has to say with respect uh, to this so reliance for this purpose it can be placed on uh, the seminal judgment of the honorable apex court in the case of mazdoor kisan shakti sangathan versus union of another union of india another which laid down the guidelines for peaceful protest or assembly uh, peaceful assembly so the court ruled here that the fundamental right to assemble peacefully and without arms which is uh, enshrined under article 19 1 clause b it was subject to reasonable restrictions provided for under article 192 and it laid down guidelines for regulating such protests and demonstrations these guidelines they also included regulating the intended number of participants in certain areas that were demarcated which uh, belongs to limits prescribed between the distance between parliament house the north and the south blocks the supreme court the residences of dignitaries within which the court said that there has to be no demonstration to be allowed they also imposed restrictions on certain routes taken by the prime ministers the central ministers the judges and the court said that demonstrations they would not be allowed when foreign dignitaries they were visiting a place or route and disallowed demonstrations for carrying firearms lathis swords and for other such purposes so with this we proceed to the next segment so this is the national news category for today so first we have an update with respect to the financial sector the competition commission of india recently which is in fact on thursday it has approved uh, the proposed merger between these two entities which is credit suisse group ag with the ubs group ag these two essentially are multinational investment banks and financial service companies which are based out of switzerland this proposed combination it entails the acquisition of credit suisse by ubs where ubs would remain the surviving entity moving on to an update from the state of up so the government of up it is to launch 5g technology training program for youth as part of the skill development mission this program it is aimed to make the youth skilled in a new and future employable technology the state government believes that youth trained in 5g technology will be needed in a large scale in the telecom sector since the same is critical for other technologies as well the government it plans to organize training and uh, employment opportunities for over 1000 candidates during an 8 month long program moving on to an update with respect uh, to the launch of uh, orin test bed project so on the occasion of world telecom day the minister of state for communications who is uh, devusin chohan he has launched open radio access network test bed project this is for the purpose of conformance certification and interoperability testing of uh, oran based solutions the minister he has uh, released a postal stamp to mark the glorious 20 years of universal service obligation fund of the ministry of communications it provides telecom services in rural and remote areas of the country India launches operation Karuna to assist cyclone hit Myanmar. India has launched operation Karuna for the purpose of assisting Myanmar which has been devastated by cyclone Mocha. Four Indian ships carrying relief materials have been commissioned by the Ministry of External Affairs for this very purpose. The super cyclone hit Bangladesh and Myanmar 
and uh, the cyclone it has hit both of these uh, countries and uh, it has caused a death toll which ranges to hundreds and this has brought us to the last segment for today which is the segment of legal updates first we have an update from the honorable apex court so the supreme court while hearing a case about the enhanced pay scale for judicial officers as per the second national judicial pay commission it is highlighted the importance of district judiciary and the court has said that they could no longer be referred to as the subordinate judiciary the name of this particular case is all india judges association versus union of india and others the next update it is also coming from the honorable apex court so the supreme court has recently ruled that a thief cannot be recognized as a the owner of a property within the ambit of section 69 capital a of uh, the income tax act of 1961 for the provisions to apply the bench has added that it is indispensable that the assessing officer must find that the articles enumerated and assessed they belong to the assessee the name of this particular matter is messrs d n singh versus a uh, commissioner of income tax and another and this is brought us to the end of tna in case you want to get access to the study material that we could we provide for free or the tna slides which have been used in this video i would encourage all of you to join our telegram channel and for the same purpose you may scan the barcode here or you may click on the link which is provided in the description also the uh, the quiz which is based out uh, of uh, yesterday's tna that is also made available for your feasibility in the description itself kindly go ahead and attempt the same also these are the point of contacts in case you want to get uh, in touch with law seeker for any purpose and thank you for being with us